I want to make a great coffee at home, but not ready to spend up big on fancy, expensive equipment. Hi, my name is Stephen, and welcome to Barista Banter. Improve your coffee, rethink life. You know, one of my favourite movies is No Country for Old Men, and the book, The Sheriff, played by Tommy Lee Jones in the movie, says, you know, the truth's got to be so simple, even a child could understand it. Well, the truth is about coffee that you can make a great coffee without any equipment, really, at home. And I want to show you how. First of all, you're going to need some freshly roasted coffee from a roaster you trust within three weeks of the roast date. I've got some out of a bag right here ready to go, and I've weighed out about 10 grams, which is all we need for about one cup. We're also going to need something to mash up the coffee with. No hand grinders, no electric grinders today. All we need is your foot or a rock, bash out the beans in a bag uh, if you're out in the wild or travelling, or if you're at home and it's going to be a little more civilised, find something to crush up the beans because it only needs to be coarse ground. We're not looking for a fine grind with this process. So I've got a mortar and pestle I'm going to use today. The other thing we're going to need, obviously, is something to put it in and hot water, boiled but not boiling. We want it just off the boil, about 95 degrees, so we've got that ready to go. And this process is really quite similar to cupping, where coffee importers will taste very various coffees from around the world and decide which farms they're going to buy from. So we're going to make one of those right now. That's something that you can do at home. First of all, we need to grind up the beans. And as we do that, those go in the mortar and pestle, we're going to notice a whole bunch of flavours uh, that are dry, dry aromas coming off those ground beans. So let's just get right in there with the mortar and pestle and just mash up the 10 grams of coffee, which we need for each cup, in this naked coffee home brew. Now it doesn't have to be fine ground. If we were making an espresso, we'd need a proper grinder to get us that really fine powdery grind. But this is not that. This is rustic. This is out in the wild. All we need to do is break it up and make it nice and coarse. Make sure each of those beans... And as we do, wow, you know, those, those aromas are really starting to come off really sweet, delicious aromas coming off that roasted coffee. Oh yeah. And appreciate that part of it. You know, this is a sort of a part where you get to get your hands a little bit dirty and earthy and, you know, feel this organic product in front of you and, and how enjoyable it can be in your hands fresh. Well, that's probably enough. What we then need to do is get this wet. So those grounds are going to go straight into this cup. Good idea to pre-warm your cups as well. That way your coffee's not going to go cold very fast. All the grounds go in there. Water on top, about 95 degrees. Good to pour from a little bit of a height, just get that, those grounds all mixing in. And what we're going to notice is the coffee's going to start to bloom and kind of take on a bit of a, a slightly volcanic kind of eruption going on inside. And also we're going to notice a little crust forming on the head, on the top of that, that glass. It's quite fun to watch. We're going to need to let that sit for a few minutes and brew. I remember in that same movie, No Country for Old Men, right at the end, I think I saw it on the plane, being quite confused by the ending because Tommy Lee's telling his wife about this dream he's had about when he was a boy and he was riding through this, on horseback through this dark valley with his father. And his father takes off into the distance and he's kind of terrified in the darkness but then comforted knowing that his father would be waiting on the other side with a fire, a campfire. And when I read the book, I realised it's really a reflection on John's Gospel, that God's light has come into a world full of darkness, but the darkness hasn't smothered it. And no matter how dark, turbulent and opaque life can be, God's light will win out. That, that's just the moment. The valley of the shadow will pass. God's light will consume the darkness. Wow. Well, that's probably enough for us to start breaking the crust. I think that's probably enough time has passed. And what we can do is actually start to experience the wet aromas as we break the crust with our spoon. Definitely some, some nice notes coming through there. And what we're going to do is get another glass and kind of screed off those, those 
ground whoop, into the other glass. A bit like, you know, saving the, the world, the, the seas from an oil spill. You want to try and scoop it off. And you can see I'm no real expert at this. But this is the, this is the process. Getting rid of those light granules that are sitting on top. We don't really want to be drinking those. That's not going to make for a pleasant experience. But once we've got most of those out of the top of the, the liquid, we can then start to appreciate what's underneath. And really, this is a bit like wine tasting. What we want to do is aerate our mouths and slurp this liquid and get it on our palate. And we'll note just different flavours and different things about it as we go. There's a lot of flavour there on the front of the palate. It's quite a crisp coffee. So there's quite a good deal of acidity there. You can also feel the body from the top of your tongue to the roof of your mouth. And as it cools, you're going to get a whole different range of flavours as well. So no need to rush this one. This is about enjoying the process, about enjoying your coffee making labours at home without spending a dime really. Barista Vanta, improve your coffee, rethink life.